Salutations. As you can tell, I'm wearing a hazmat suit because a guest that I have on the show is very capable of getting me sick if I breathe in its toxic fumes. Anyways, with the release of the mod tools for the Master Chief Collection version of Halo 2, the modding community for this game is now capable of doing so much more with the game than they've ever been in the past. One of these new abilities is proper tag injection into other levels. And as you can see from the title of this video, this means a certain piece of cut content can finally inhabit other campaign levels besides High Charity. Now, allow me to introduce you to the Juggernaut. Say hi, Gregory. For those who are unaware, the Juggernaut is a cut enemy flood form that was originally going to appear in Halo 2's campaign. It was a hulking beast that was meant to play a similar role to that of the Covenant's Hunters, where they'd be extremely tanky units that would be capable of engaging heavier targets. It would use its two long tendrils to attack opponents. However, the hitbox for this attack is wonky, meaning hit detection could be inconsistent for this unit. The Juggernaut was also able to scale walls by climbing on them, using their tendrils like ice picks to make progress. The Juggernaut also had a weak spot on its face. While there's a spot that looks like a mouth, this was actually meant to serve as the Juggernaut's eye, as proven by cut dialogue that I'll show off a bit later. When attacking the eye, it'll cause the Juggernaut to close its eye and recoil in pain, and upon doing so, it'll launch it to a frenzy and start rapidly slamming its tendrils around it in an attempt to ward off its attackers. As in the nature of most cut content, what remains of the Juggernaut's assets that were left over in the final game are in an unfinished state, and is missing a few key features. The most notable missing feature is a lack of a death animation. When the Juggernaut is killed, it'll simply freeze in place. It also doesn't have animations for attacking airborne opponents like Sentinels. Because of this, Juggernauts just kind of stand there and accept their demise. Lastly, they don't have any sound effects associated with them other than the standard melee attack sound and the response sound when meleeing Flood Flesh. Besides missing features, Juggernauts are also taken out fairly easily. They're slow, very large targets, and often get stuck on objects due to their size. They're effectively stun-locked when using an energy sword against them as well. Taking all this into account, it's not difficult to see why the Juggernaut was cut from the game. It was just a large bullet sponge that wasn't effective at killing things. It was even revealed in the first episode of Bravo's Halo 2 Artifact series that the Juggernaut game mode was originally going to have the Juggernaut actually take control of the giant flood form of the same name instead of just a beefed up Spartan or Elite. That would have been pretty cool to see, although I could see why that wouldn't go well on some of the smaller maps. Another fun one is that in a multiplayer game rules document from late 2002, we find that Juggernaut was originally very different from the final ship version because we've seen leaked footage of the Juggernaut from campaign, the Flood Juggernaut. Sure. And the original multiplayer spec also states that the Juggernaut assumes the form of an actual Juggernaut from the game. Uh, sturdier, faster, do more damage, and can jump twice as high. Yeah. Uh, instead of weapons, <laughs> they rely on two tentacles linked to the left and right triggers, which are short-range melee attacks, yeah. and pressing the trigger of the tentacle that picked up the item then hurls that item at a terrific speed in the direction they're facing. That was that was all. That was my plan. I just never could get enough uh, manpower to implement it. With our lengthy introduction to the beast out of the way, allow me to show you what I've discovered throughout Halo 2's campaign relating to the Juggernaut. And there's quite a lot to showcase. I'm also announcing that this video will include a small map pack of the modded campaign maps that will feature these Juggernaut encounters. For those who like to use the maps as a foundation for their own mods, I'll also be including the scenario tags and script documents too. Thank you for your help, Gregory. As mentioned earlier, the Juggernaut was originally found in the files for the high charity level. However, with the power of the new modding tools for Halo 2 MCC, it's confirmed that the Juggernaut was intended to appear on at least three other campaign levels. Not surprisingly, these were the other flood levels of the game, which include Oracle, Sacred Icon, and Quarantine Zone. Please keep in mind that while some of these spawn locations were actually placed down by mission designers during the game's development, a few other are custom spawn points made by me due to a lack of spawns for them in certain areas. I did this because while I couldn't find spawn points for the Juggernaut in a given location, there was evidence that I found elsewhere that implied the existence of a Juggernaut or two in these areas, and I'll make sure to point these speculative spawn locations out when they show up. If, by some chance, there are X Halo 2 mission designers watching this video that worked on these levels in the various Juggernaut encounters, it'd be an honor if you reached out to me, and we can discuss how these encounters were actually meant to be executed for maximum accuracy. Let's begin with the Juggernaut's originally intended debut. 
Shortly after the Oracle's opening cutscene, the incredibly fitting Juggernaut chapter title appears on screen, and the player makes their way into the room with a glass floor that shows the heretic elites engaging flood units. By the rings, what is that? <laughs> Quiet. It's moved on. Quickly before it returns, let's find the heretic leader and finish him off. As you just heard, this scene is accompanied with specific mission dialogue for an elite and a grunt. However, miraculously, these lines actually still play in the regular version of this level. Let's watch this scene again, but on a clean copy of Oracle. By the rings, what is that? <laughs> Quiet. It's moved on. Quickly before it returns, let's find the heretic leader and finish him off. The elite's usage of singular pronouns for describing the flood, such as what is that or it's moved on, is notable. It was originally meant for the elite to be talking about the juggernaut in this scene. In fact, this is confirmed when looking through the mission scripts for the Oracle. There's notes left by the mission designers that talk about the Spec Ops troops reacting specifically to a Juggernaut. However, considering the aforementioned lines are still being used to this day despite the removal of the Juggernaut, it's implied that the singular descriptions are now meant to reference the entirety of the Flood Faction as one unit. Either that, or Bungie just forgot to remove those lines after cutting the Juggernaut. After all, they're easy to miss since most players just run through this hallway without stopping to watch the fight below. Our next Juggernaut encounter and the last one for the Oracle, takes place shortly after the long elevator ride into the lab room with the plasma turrets. According to the order of the scripts that command certain lines of dialogue to play, the Juggernaut would appear sometime after the next wave of heretic elites spawn from the upper floor of this room. The way I have this Juggernaut encounter set up is a bit speculative, but there is an actual spawn point for a Juggernaut located at the top of this area. It would spawn in this dark room, then jump down into the lab area and proceed to smash the glass window to attack the player. I'll play the entire scene for you now. Come, prepare yourself, Arbiter! It's rubbed off every assault! It must have a weak The eye, Arbiter! Aim for its eye! So to describe what just happened, Upon sight of the Juggernaut, one of your elite allies, if they're still alive, will exclaim that the Juggernaut is approaching and will tell you to brace yourself. Noticing that the beast is hardly taking any damage, your ally hopes to find an exploitable weak spot, only to realize soon after that the eye is a target of choice. The way this encounter is set up is sort of like a traditional boss battle that you'd see in other games. When the Juggernaut reaches 50% health, more flood units spawn in to assist the beast and carrier forms come in when the Juggernaut reaches 25% health. The mission will continue as normal once the Juggernaut and its entourage of flood reinforcements are killed. Going back to the dialogue that the allied elites were saying in this scene, there's a neat surprise that I discovered. There's actually a variant of this scene for Ertos, or the half-jawed Spec Ops commander. I'll play this variation of the scene now. It's tough. Prepare yourself, Arbiter! Off our every assault. It must have a weak spot. I have it right here. The eye of it. Aim for its eye. This scenario looks to be the remnants of a different plan for the Spec Ops Commander for this part of the mission. Instead of holding position next to the doors that lead to the elevator, the commander would instead follow you to the elevator like the other elite allies do and help you make your way to the heretic leader on foot. Astute players have realized that this particular line that the commander says is used again in the beginning of Quarantine Zone. Go, Arbiter. I'll follow when our reinforcements arrive. Forward, warriors, and fear not pain or death. Go, Arbiter. I'll follow when our reinforcements arrive. Now, you know why. 
When this scene in the Oracle was changed to have the commander hold his position rather than follow you, instead of going through the effort to record an entirely new line, they just used the line from Quarantine Zone but without the radio filter. Moving on, we won't see another Juggernaut encounter until the end of Sacred Icon, specifically at the point where you rendezvous with the Spec Ops commander and help him ward off waves of flood. However, this next Juggernaut encounter is almost entirely speculative as there's no unused spawn points for the Juggernaut here, nor was there any documentation in the mission script file for Sacred Icon. I have to give a shout out to the YouTube channel Slacking Stacker for pointing this out to me, however. There's a specific AI order instance in the scenario tag called QZ, Cov, Def, Jug, Init. Before anyone calls this a stretch, Jug is often part of the names for the various cut squads that were meant to have Juggernauts in them, so it's highly likely that these orders were meant for them as well. When selecting an AI order in Sapien, it'll show a bunch of these squares in the game world. These squares represent firing positions, which are spots on a map that AI use to navigate and attack targets in a playable space. Groups of firing positions are called areas. The aforementioned AI order is a set of rules of engagement that the AI follow if their squad page references an AI order. Most of the time, the only order is to have a squad of AI utilize specific firing position areas. In this case, our Juggernaut order commands anything that uses this order to use the 8th, 9th, and 10th firing position areas in this space, and you can see all three of those highlighted in the game world when selecting the Juggernaut order. This encounter is also accompanied by lines of unused dialogue, confirming that a Juggernaut was meant to spawn here at one point in time. Here's the encounter in full. Leader, a Juggernaut, found an unholy beast. The rank, <laughs> we'll take it down together. By the rear. So basically, while the encounter itself is very likely to not be part of the original vision, the pathfinding data still is, and that will be the case for a few of the other subsequent Juggernaut encounters seen in this video. Our next Juggernaut encounter takes us to the next mission, Quarantine Zone. Shortly after getting the Scorpion, there's the first outdoor segment with the enemy Pelican and a bunch of Sentinels. At the bottom of the spiral ramp, there's a massive hole in the ground, and climbing out of it are two Juggernauts. Arbiter. This is actually another speculative encounter as there weren't any preset spawn points for Juggernauts here, but there are two clues that are used as references. The first one is within the line of dialogue that accompanies this scene. Notice that the Elite is noticing Juggernauts in plural form. Arbiter, juggernauts. That's how I knew there was likely going to be more than one Juggernaut for this encounter. The other clue was a pair of preset climbing hints that scale the walls of this hole that go completely unused in the base game. Climbing hints are points on a map that coax AI to climb along a given pathway. And of course, there's an AI order for the Juggernaut here as well. The following two encounters in this area are completely speculative and made by me, but the pathfinding data as seen by the AI order encompassing most of the space was for a Juggernaut. For one of the spawns, I have a Juggernaut leap out in front of you after crossing the metallic bridge. And then one more runs out of this cave and is backed up by the two ghosts. Our next run-in with Juggernauts is after the first Sentinel factory room. Once we make it outside, we run into two Juggernauts attempting, and failing, to engage the Sentinel Enforcers. These two spawns were actually placed by Bungie beforehand. After these two, we make it into the second Sentinel factory room, and we see another Juggernaut jumping down from one of the large vents near the ceiling. I got a bit creative with this next encounter. Like with a few of the other Juggernaut encounters, this one once again doesn't have a preset spawn point, but it does have an AI order that commands Juggernaut to roam near these UNSC crates. But why? In the base game, there's nothing there for a Juggernaut to fight, and I can't imagine a Juggernaut just standing around. It turns out that there's a set of cut spawns over here that would serve as enemies for the Juggernaut. 
but they wouldn't be sentinels or even other covenant troops, but would instead be a squad of three marines backed by a manned scorpion. The juggernaut was meant to be slaughtering these poor souls, and the player could just sit back and watch as it unfolds. There's even a line of cut dialogue for the Spec Ops commander that shows him expressing pity for the humans as they're killed by the juggernaut. Here's the entire scene in full. I almost feel sorry for them. This next encounter is completely custom made by me, considering I couldn't find any clues outside of the Juggernaut AI order that spans the entirety of the space. As you make your way into the last open area with the vehicle, there's a Juggernaut rushing you from the cave, and a second one is flanking you from the left. The last Juggernaut encounter from this mission is quite special. Inside the mission script file, there's notes that provide details as to how this Juggernaut encounter would play out. According to these notes, a Juggernaut would appear during the 24th mission encounter which is specifically the part of the gondola ride that has the machine begin to rise up several floors. During this part, a juggernaut along with a squad of unarmed combat forms would jump down from the upper floors onto the gondola and attack the elites on board. The script document mentions a juggernaut squad called E-24 FLD Juggernaut, but it's actually not present in the scenario at all. The aforementioned combat forms, however, do have spawn points up here, so I place a Juggernaut spawn perpendicular to that group of Flood and simply had both squads jump onto the gondola at the same time. The scene also has cut dialogue from an allied Spec Ops Elite. Here's the entire scene. To attack from above. Prepare yourselves. There's a stubborn enemy. This is the last of the documented cut Juggernaut encounters that I found in Halo 2, but we're not quite done with this video just yet. For fun, I wanted to add two more Juggernaut encounters in the high charity level. Despite the fact there's no evidence of Juggernaut encounters, or even AI orders associated with them, I felt it would be appropriate to include them on here since high charity was the original Juggernaut level after all this time. Since the beginning part of high charity is a notably iconic location for showcasing the Juggernaut, our first encounter appears here. I had a Juggernaut scale a wall right in front of you shortly after the initial cutscene ends, and you can see the Juggernaut begin to take on the Covenant forces as you deal with the combat forms rushing you down. The second and last Juggernaut encounter occurs at the end of the level, with two Juggernauts jumping down from the areas above the end trigger. It's the player's job to juke past the Juggernauts to finish the level. To wrap this video up, I'd like to show you a bit of trivia relating to the Juggernaut unit itself. When on high charity, with switching to anniversary graphics, you'll see that there is in fact an anniversary asset for the Juggernaut, but it's an untextured model. However, when injecting the Juggernaut to another map, the Juggernaut's anniversary model is nowhere to be found. Why is that? Unfortunately, at the time of this video's posting, the Halo 2 mod tools for MCC don't grant us access to Saber Interactive's anniversary assets, and they only appear on maps that were originally compiled by the developers. Hopefully that changes in the future. And that's going to be it for this video. If, and only if, you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, leave a comment on what you thought about these Juggernaut encounters, hit the bell to be notified on my next upload, and subscribe for more Halo content from this channel. I also have a Patreon, where you can voluntarily donate to further support the channel. I'd like to thank my St. Healy Zealots, as well as counselors Joe Antonetti, Cohen Lord Daytona, Kyle Dealman, Lauren Kleckner, and Rad Mayan. This is the Ventral Vatum, and I'll see you on the great journey.